Hello. In this lesson, we're going to talk about scaling, which is um, a sort of more algorithmic way of designing our active op amp filters. Um, you know, we sort of arbitrarily pick some values for the capacitors and the resistors in our filter designs, but we need a way to sort of do it in a more realistic fashion, right? So gain is just R2 over R1, and that could be anything, right? So it could be you know, for a gain of 10, that could be 10 ohms over 1 ohms or 10 kilo ohms over 1 kilo ohms, right? How do you actually pick a values, pick specifically for your resistors um, that make sense, that are a little bit more realistic for filters that you're trying to build? Scaling gives us a technique to do that. So let's get into it. So there are two components to scaling. Two components to scaling. The first is called magnitude scaling. And we can break it out into three components or three pieces here. For resistors, to get our scaled resistance, we'll just do what we call the scaling constant for magnitude, k sub m, times the original value of the resistor. For inductors, the scaled inductor is also just Km times L. For capacitors, it's a little bit different. It's equal to the original capacitance, but this time it's divided by K sub m. And on the other side, we have frequency scaling. Two frequency. And it's pretty similar. This just has to do with scaling by the frequency, moving that center frequency or cutoff frequency around. Um, for resistors, resistors do not care about frequency, so there is no frequency scaling for resistors. For inductors, the frequency scaled inductor will be the original inductance over the scaling constant for frequency, K sub F. And capacitors also, just like magnitude, are the capacitance over k sub f. And typically we don't take them one at a time. What we do is just do what we call component scaling, where we put them together. Component scaling. So that means to scale a resistor, to get a new scaled resistor, r prime, that's just going to be equal to the scaling constant for magnitude, k sub m, times the resistance. For an inductor, it's going to be k sub m times L over k sub f. And for the capacitor, it's going to be the capacitance over k sub m times k sub f. Now what we do is we can use these scaling constants or the sort of concept of scaling to design filters from what we call the prototype filter. So let's talk about what that means. So I'm going to say using scaling to design a filter. And we'll do an example of this as well. There's three steps. And what we're going to do is we're going to say set up the prototype filter with a center or cutoff frequency equals one radians per second and all of our values are one. R1 is equal to one, R2 is equal to one, ohm, ohm, and most importantly our capacitor is going to be equal to one Farad. So you basically just set up with this clean slate, what they call the prototype capacitor. And then we calculate um, let's see, calculate actually I want to change this from the way the textbook presents it. I'm not super wild about that. So I'm actually going to do, the textbook has a three step process. We're going to do a two step process. And I'm going to say use scaling or actually let me change that one more time. Sorry, I'm sort of like improvising on the fly here. Um, choose desired capacitance. And 
And then step three, use scaling to calculate R1 and R2. So let me recap that real quick. Step one is set up the prototype filter. So that's a center frequency of one, R1 um, is equal to one ohm, R2 is equal to one ohm, and our capacitor is equal to one farad. So this blank clean slate uh, filter, choose the desired capacitance, and then use that and the scaling factors to calculate our appropriate values for R1 and R2. So if that seems a little abstract, let's just go ahead and do an example to see what that looks like. So what we want to do here is design a low-pass filter. Design an active low-pass filter. with a frequency or cutoff frequency of one kilohertz and a passband gain of five and use a 10 nanofarad capacitor. So design an active low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of one kilohertz and a passband gain to five using a 10 nanofarad capacitor. So the first thing we want to do is set up that prototype filter. So that's just going to be R, one ohm resistor for R1, and I didn't give myself much room, let me do this real quick. There we go. And that's going to feed to R. Op amp minus plus positive input goes to ground. We've got our output, and then we've got our other R2, which we start with at just one ohm. And our capacitor C, which we'll start with one farad. And then we have our output and input voltages, plus minus V in, and plus minus V out. So that's our prototype filter. The next thing we need to do is, let's see what it's up to you. Choose the desired capacitance. That was given to us in the problem statement. So, so we're gonna set C equal to 10 nanofarads. And then step three is use scaling to calculate R1 and R2. So we'll start with that scaling function for capacitance. So C is equal to, or the new capacitor is equal to the original capacitor, the prototype capacitor, time, or over Km times Kf. Now we know what Kf is because we want to shift from one hertz or one rating per second out to um, our new thing. So what we need to do actually first is calculate our frequency scaling constant in radians per second. So that's just going to be two pi times one kilohertz, which is a thousand. And that's going to be equal to 6,283.185 radians per second. We also know that our desired value for capacitance, C prime, is equal to 10 nanofarads, so 10 times 10 to the negative 9 farads. 
and we can solve for our km. So km is going to equal, what do we have? C over C prime times kf, which is going to be 1, the original capacitance, over the new capacitance, 10 times 10 to the negative 9, times our frequency scaling factor, 6,283.18. Five, and that's going to get us a Km equal to 15,915.5. Now we can use Km to find our resistance values. And the way we're going to do that is R2 is just equal to Km times our original R, which was equal to that big old number, 15,915.5 times 1 ohm gets us 15,915.5 ohms. And our value for R1 is going to be, we're going to use that gain. Remember, we need to get a gain of 5, so it's going to be K over, or excuse me, not K over, but rather R2 over K. So that's going to be this big guy, 15,915.5 over 5, and that equals 3,183 ohms. So there we go. See, these are more sort of realistic, real-world values for, for resistors that you could use in your 1 kilohertz filter. Right. Once we picked our capacitor, you know, getting a gain of five is still like you could do in five ohms over one ohm, right? But these values jive with the value of our capacitor a little bit better. So you're going to get a better performance in real life from these capacitor values. Let's go ahead and draw this out before we call it a day. We've got our input node. Now, also in real life, I'll make a note of the fact that you know, 15,915.5 ohms, it's not a very realistic value for a capacitor, or excuse me, for a resistor. So what you'd probably end up doing is approximating and getting something like this. So our resistor R1 was given to us as 3,183 ohms. You would probably actually end up picking something like 3.2 kilo ohms. Feeds to the op amp, minus plus, whoop, plus goes to ground. R2, again, 15,915.5 ohms. It's not so great, so you'd probably end up using something just like 16 kilo ohms. And then we have a capacitor that we picked to be 10 nanofarads. So there we go, V in minus plus V out minus. Now you might think to yourself, well, you know, that wasn't that much easier than um, just solving it like we did in the previous lesson. And you'd be absolutely right, but there's two key takeaways, two reasons why you would use this method over just designing it from whole cloth. And the primary one being you want to get values that are more realistic. These are the proper values that you should use in practice when designing your filter circuit to go with the capacitor that you're using. So um, just to kind of recap that process, um, given your spec, the first thing you'll do is you'll set up that prototype filter where basically everything is equal to one, choose the capacitor value, and then use your scaling factors to build up your actual values for your resistors from those scaling constants. So there you go. That's how we design a low pass filter using scaling techniques. So hopefully you found that to be pretty simple. Um, like I said, scaling gives us a good algorithmic approach to designing our active filter circuits. And most importantly, lets us pick values for our resistors that are a little bit more realistic and that in real life are going to perform a lot better with the capacitor values and at the frequencies that we're working with. 
Um, in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at how to design band pass and band reject op amp filter circuits. Um, again, pretty simple as long as we follow some basic steps, um, but they do get a little bit bigger. They require multiple op amps to work properly, um, and I think they're pretty interesting. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And if not, I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.